putting an end to identity politics. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. This was a major breach of trust, and and I'm really sorry that this happened. Um, you know, we have a basic responsibility to protect people's data, and if we can't do that, then then we don't uh, deserve to have the opportunity to serve people. So our responsibility now is to make sure that this doesn't happen again. And there are a few basic things that I think we need to do to ensure that. One is uh, making sure that uh, developers uh, like uh, Alexander Kogan, who got access to a lot of information and then um, improperly used it, just don't get access to as much information going forward. So we are, are doing a set of things to, um, to restrict the amount of access that, that, um, that developers can get going forward. But the other is we need to make sure that there aren't uh, any other Cambridge Analytica is out there, right, or folks who have improperly accessed data. So uh, we're going to go now and investigate every app uh, that has access to a large uh, amount of, of information from before we lock down uh, our platform. And if we detect any suspicious activity, we're going to do a full forensic audit uh, and, and, and make sure that no one out there is improperly using data. And that's, I think, the responsibility that we have uh, to people in our community. All right, everybody. Welcome back. That was Mark Zuckerberg explaining the data hack, you know, and access to data and you can't have this anymore, et cetera, et cetera. It's the Kevin Jackson. So glad you guys are here. You buying what this clown is saying? I don't buy. This is the very same guy who and I don't have the clip, but he said something along the lines of these stupid effing people give me their data. They give me access to their lives. They have no idea what I can do with it. And for the record, Cambridge Analytica is not the bad guy here. I love how he said that. How, we're not sure how many more. Make sure He says, make sure there are no more Cambridge Analyticas out there. In other words, make sure there's no more people out there who are in the, in the business of trying to gather data so they can do what they want with it. The only people that should have the data is what is, this is what Zuckerberg's telling you. The only people who should have the data are people like him. He's in control of the data. That's the danger is if anybody else gets the data. Glad you guys are here. It's Kevin Jackson show where I give you the data. See, this is not about me keeping all the secrets to myself. I'm giving you the keys to the kingdom. That data that you collect. In other words, when I get my friends and my friends get their friends, etc., and they like my message, that's my data. That's not Facebook's data. I should have access to my data. What, what Zuckerberg wants you to understand is that it isn't your data, Kevin Jackson. So what? You built an audience on Facebook. So what? They care about what you do or say. And so what? Those people have reached into other people and they like certain elements of what you say. You have no right to get to your data. It's all my data. Mark Zuckerberg is big brother presiding over and a, a massive amount of information about you. I've, I've argued that Mark Zuckerberg likely knows more about you, more about your, your kids, your relatives than you do. And I'm not even being funny when I say that. He knows what baseball game they're about to go to. He knows who won the championship. He knows who's going to do a play, who's going to visit so-and-so. The amount of information exchanged... If if we just pulled out your family and, 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 and Zuckerberg said, Kevin, tell me about yourself. Zuckerberg knows more, I promise you, about my family than I do, exponentially so. Think of this. You've got Ancestry.com. What if this guy goes out next and he buys Ancestry.com and not only does he know what I'm doing with my immediate family, but he could map ancestry.com and say here's even more family you don't know that you have and he maps that out and looks at all the different algorithms writes an algorithm that says analyze people's families and then make sure that they know to keep each person in the know can you imagine I'm just giving you an example of the power within the data structure of Facebook 1.5 billion people on that site if he could get everybody to come over give you access to your ancestry, you take the DNA, 
You then know everybody that you you, you want to talk about finding long lost friends. You will find out who was a sperm donor in college. You will find out relatives you didn't have. You're going to find out daddies that aren't your daddies. Mo- well, not mothers that aren't your mothers. That's pretty tough right there. <laughs> but you're going to find daddies that weren't your daddies. You're going to find out that you have two or three other brothers or sisters that nobody wanted to talk about in the family. Can you imagine what he could do with that data? I'm just giving you one example. This is why when I talk about Zuckerberg, I tell you, this is a kid who's playing with a nuclear football and he's out with a fr- like a frat boy saying, hey, who's up for a game with some flag? <laughs> because there, this is got it's fraught with so many possibilities and by the way many of these are amazingly good possibilities they're amazingly good i would j- extending the ancestry thing can you i'm i did my ancestry and i'm still working through different things with different folks so i just the other day i had a, a girl call me she sent me a note on ancestry kevin we're cousins <laughs> i don't know how because i don't know my dad she says, my stepdad raised me and, you know, th- this is all this. This is what I know so far. And she gave me the name of, of what she believes is her father. And I we looked at our ancestry and I said, you know what, I'll try to figure it out. But I don't know how to figure it out just yet. But that question came to me. So we know we're cousins. And and, and that's all we know at this point. And we're sort of going backwards. Imagine a Facebook that could say, yeah, your cousins and you were talking about who's your dad. You had the name. I've mapped all the names of of men of this age that could theoretically be your your dad uh, based on this geography. Here's a good place to start. Facebook could make that happen so fast. It's ridiculous. And that would be a good thing because uh, my cousin would be able to figure it out. We Because I'm telling you, we are looking through our gene- genealogy, our, our uh, tree going, geez, I'm not really sure because we just don't quite have enough information. I've told you uh, there are businesses out there and uh, um, home home advisors and Angie's List that could be done. They're, those business models gone. It, if Facebook, let's say for some, I don't know if they would ever do it, but let's say that they went and bought Amazon and everything you were looking for they had it readily available and knew the market. Here's a good one. Here's a perfect one. So let's say you wanted to uh, build a, a marketplace. And, and and I think they have this, by the way. And it's a local marketplace. So you're looking for a particular chair. And somebody wants to sell it, whether it's a store or an individual. And you say you can get it new or used. And I'm going to map you to somebody right in your area to do it. Not only could I map you to that. I could say to you, if you don't own a truck, by the way, I'd probably know that you don't own a truck. I could tell you, hey, little uh, Lopez's a truck move, you know, truck service will help you move it or some mover will do it. Or you have a buddy with a truck who can help you. And I know he's in town because, uh, you know, he just returned from vacation. That's the kind of stuff that can be done right now with Facebook. And Zuckerberg wants to be the keeper of the data. And you wonder why, you know, now I'm one of these guys, I'm a a futurist and a risk management guy. And I'm, you know, that's why I started TeaPartyCommunity.org. And I'm encouraging you guys to go. I'll be blunt. I'm very upset that more people understanding what's happening at Facebook haven't just gone over and embraced TeaPartyCommunity.org. I don't know. it, It amazes me with the conservative movement, how we know we need something. It gets done. And then somebody, oh, I don't know, I'll get around to it. I was talking to some folks at an event the other day and I, and they were like, I said, you know, we're the most complacent group. We wonder how we get lulled into this nonsense with leftists and we are the most inactive. We're so busy with kids and family, you know, and, and other family and friends and trying to enjoy life that we're losing the lives that we have. We're going to leave junk to our kids and it's it isn't going to be because it, they weren't there. We've been throwing lifelines at each other now for the better part of two or three decades and nobody's taking them. Zuckerberg has acted. He isn't acting on behalf of us. He's acting on behalf of his movement. He's amassed 1.5 billion people, including us. 
And he's saying, okay, now I'm going to start separating people out and I'm going to start analyzing this data and I'm going to put my foot on the throat of conservatives. And I bring a lifeline, TeaPartyCommunity.org, and I can't get a million people to come over and say, we're game. We're going to be the resistance to these guys. In case you haven't noticed, they are not the resistance. We are. It, it bugs me because it's too hard a work to do this. And this guy makes it look easy. He won't stop until he's the top rated radio talk show host in America. What kind of weird competitive freak are you? This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show.